had it all worked out. I had scrimped, saved, lied and cheated my way through seven years. Living in the same tiny, barely even one bed flat, working three jobs and finally, I bought that five bed spacious Victorian house up North Hill in Plymouth. Sure, it was a little run down, but after a few months, I thought, put in some money and work and this would be a perfect place to rent out. This was my chance, some stable income. I could rent my own place alone with an art studio and not worry about where my next paycheck comes from. It was perfect. And that's just the thing about life. Nothing ever goes to plan. Why would anything just fall perfectly into place? As soon as I was happy, boom. March 2020, the world closes down. Well, fine, I thought. I was stuck in this huge house. It's not like I was going anywhere, ever. At least it was some alone time. Well, end to Toby. Here's a puzzle for you. Your best friend lives nearby with his family, elderly mother included, and his asshole boss refuses to furlough him. And you just so happen to have this massive, empty house with plentiful bedrooms to spare. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, of course, Briny, let him move in. Yeah, well, throw in a completely introverted personality and crippling social anxiety. Not so straightforward. But somehow, I ended up with this societal obligation, so that's it. Hotel doors are open. Toby moves in. <laughs> It wasn't a problem, as such. I suppose it was nice to have the company. Toby's a laugh and he's clean and polite, but he started bringing things in. Nothing abhorrent, you know. I don't take my kitchen being full of wholesale hand sanitizer as a personal attack, but to be honest, I couldn't care less what Toby brought through those doors as long as it wasn't COVID. I even turned a blind eye when he started stockpiling. Until one day, he came home with Susanna and Mac. People. You have to understand, Toby's was the only face I'd seen for at least five weeks at that point. So what on earth were these humans doing in my house? I was about to hit the roof, I was absolutely fuming. I'd been isolating for so long last while to protect Toby. So he would have less exposure just in case. Makes it a whole lot easier if at least I'm not a contributing factor. So then, after all that, he goes, nah, and suddenly these strangers are literally inside my house. So I go to Toby, who are they? What are you thinking? And he's all like, this is Susanna. She works at Dartmoor Zoo and this is Mac. He's a carer and they've been kicked out by their evil landlord for being essential workers and they needed another place to stay. So I thought, oh, well... Bryony's so lovely and generous, she couldn't possibly leave these essential key workers out on the cold, cold streets, lost without a place to stay. So, two became four. I don't like having strangers in my house, especially not the pandemic, but what else was I supposed to do? Turn them away at my doorstep. I've always felt stuck on the other side of a window with people watching through the glass like I'm there in the moment but not quite it's why I've always lived alone why I crave the blissful solitude of art I'm not anti-social it's just not me so it wasn't a surprise that we all started fighting nothing serious just People would leave things everywhere and there were too many little reminders that people are around and existing in my space. So I'd take Toby's wall figurines and throw them in his room and he'd yell at me and complain because I was picking on him and I never moved Susanna's succulents. But that was different. They were nice. Or they'd all shower consecutively, one after the other, leaving me blocked from using my own bathroom for hours. And it would always smell like Mac's sandalwood shampoo and 
Susanna's lavender soap. Although, I never quite minded that. But look, I know logically it's all inconsequential stuff, but it upset me and there was nothing I could have done about it. Where else could they have gone? So, I just hide out in my room all day, painting, escaping into my private serenity. It was the only place I felt true stillness away from the bustling lives of my key worker housemates. Mac was determined to crack me out of my shell. He'd spent his days at work surrounded by lonely people, aching for human interaction, and he could just not understand why I'd sit in my room all day. He'd try and coax me downstairs, get me to try and play him on Mario Kart, but it's not what I wanted. You're so boring, Bryony, he'd tell me. You only ever come downstairs when Susanna's made you brownies again. We never see you, although you're always here. You're like a ghost. Well, it's quite a happy haunting my room. I had my art, and if I ever wanted human interaction, Susanna had probably sent me enough TikToks to fill a whole evening, so I was fine by myself. But. Even the strongest of empires fall eventually. Susanna was wanting some art lessons and even though I definitely have rules about people being in my one safe place, she seemed so keen and enthusiastic. And she really had been rather quite lovely to me, so I let her in and we paint together. She'd tell me about her day, her passions and just life. How she always found comfort in animals, so went straight into zookeeping when she finished school. I never considered zookeeping being a central word, but of course it is. How else would the animals survive? She'd tell me about exercising otters and how the big cats love to play tug of war and... Well, the point is... It wasn't all bad. As soon as Susanna and I started getting closer, it just became easier to be in the common rooms. We even all started having dinner together and we'd all play on Mac Switch together. Although everyone was in and out of the house at different times, working different shifts, there was always someone with a new story to tell. Or someone cooking something wonderful with a song and a smile. We'd stay up all night on those sofas, long after anything interesting had finished on TV, and just talk for hours. And when Toby and Mac eventually went to sleep, Susanna and I would go on all night. Those moments were so special. It was like seeing the sunrise for the first time. I'd never really realised just how beautiful the light was. I always thought I loved staying up late, existing in the eerie silence of the world, when everyone was asleep and my only company was the coin raven who never seemed to leave my window so. But my nights became these moments so full of joy and life. I even found myself looking up jokes to make Susanna laugh. She has the brightest smile with the sweetest dimples. It's infectious, absolutely infectious. And I just melt every time I'd see it. As the months went by, it all only became so much more wonderful. In the world that became so distant and virtual, we were the only real connection any of us had. I can't believe I nearly pushed it all away. I finally had three best friends who loved and cared for me. Well, 
eventually two best friends and a girlfriend. That night Savannah asked me. I could barely contain myself, I thought I would burst. She took my hand in hers and told me she loved me. That I was brilliant and beautiful. And all she ever thought about. I couldn't speak past my tears, but I wanted to tell her I wish we'd just done it all sooner. I'd just been afraid of my feelings, of what she might think of me, but she made me so strong and sure. She's inspirational. My muse. Yeah, that's what I'd tell her if I could. I'd tell her to take chances, do what makes you happy and enjoy every second of it. Life is too beautiful and exciting to live in fear of what anyone else thinks. We would have had more time had I not been too afraid to let you know how much I adore you. You might as well live the day when you never know what's coming around the corner. I never thought opening up my house to all these people would introduce me to the purity of friendship and love. I never imagined I'd find so much joy in it. And I wouldn't take it back. Not any of it. Not our movie nights and come dine with me dinners and always having a friendly face to chat to at any time. Not even our silly little arguments and the mess of the kitchen, keeping each other up at night. Any of it. Even that day when Toby came home with a bit of a temperature. Of course we all got a bit of a temperature. We were all isolating together when we found out we all had COVID. It barely touched Toby and Susanna and Mac lost their sense of smell when that was that. It wasn't anybody's fault. Toby couldn't help that he had to work and I couldn't help that my age group wasn't eligible for the vaccine yet. I watched them all recover as I crumbled. I was young, healthy, active. I never saw it coming. No one did. It was just so fast, unrelenting, inescapable. It was all over so quick. I wish I could have told her that every moment we spent together were the best of my life. She knew, but I wish I could have told her. But time wasn't on my side. I wish I could have held her hand, but I was just stuck on the other side of the window. That's the thing about death. It doesn't wait for you to be finished. Neatly wrap up all your business and decide it's time. It doesn't play fair. You're in the middle of life. The middle of a moment. The middle of a sentence. It doesn't care. It takes you anyway.